how to differentiate your business. Are you in a crowded market? Not sure how to stand out? Well, you're going to want to stick with me because I'm sharing three strategies on how to differentiate your business. Welcome. In this video, what I'm going to cover is how to differentiate your business, even if you are in a super crowded market and why it's critical to do this now more than ever. I'm going to give you at least three strategies and I'm going to save the very best strategy for the end. So you want to make sure to hang with me until the end. My name is Patty Dominguez. I'm a positioning expert and I specialize in helping service-based entrepreneurs establish their category of one, making their competition irrelevant. Basically taking all of my former corporate experience, working with some of the biggest brands in the world, bringing to you the small business entrepreneur that blended with real world strategies to help you build that business of your dreams. Okay. So we're talking about how to differentiate your business because let's face it, differentiation is critical to success. This applies to any business, whatever your business offers, whether it's a service, a product, or anything in between. So the question on the table is, how are you differentiating? So I'm going to cover three strategies and strategy number one on how to differentiate your business is you want to own the thing that makes you different and then go all in and leverage that. See, each of us is so unique and where most people will focus on purely the accolades of what it is that they do, the external validators, maybe the social proof points, they're really hanging their hats solely on that. And let's face it, that's just not enough. Now, I'm not saying that having a certification is important. But hang with me because I'll go more into that. What I want you to know is that there's a really big opportunity and it's about owning the thing that makes you different. So going back to this concept of coaching. So let's say that you're a coach, a health coach, and there are those certification companies that are just cranking out a whole lot of health coaches, hundreds, thousands. So the question is, now that you know how to provide a result, how are you standing out, right? The competition is so fierce out there, but the way to differentiate your business is to own who you are. Are. Not to sound like Dr. Seuss, but yeah, it's what makes you you. You, because there's only one of you. And while there may be other health coaches out there, and while you may be working to look at the latest marketing tactic on how to get your brand out there, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Shorts, I have to tell you, before you go into the tactics, it's not about the tactics. It's about leaning into those things that makes you different, because that's all a part of the positioning so that you can stand out. Now, I always recommend one of the easiest things for my clients to do is to send out a questionnaire to a good mix of people, your clients, your peers, your friends, your family, your mentors, again, a good cross-section of people. And in that questionnaire, you could ask about 30 people. Maybe you'll get 10 to 12 answers back. Okay. That's what typically happens because, you know, people get sidetracked, they forget, et cetera. So you want to make sure that you're getting more than the amount of questionnaires that you think you're going to get back. Okay. So you can also get my mini course. Uh, you'll see it in the description instead of coming up with your own questionnaire and your own questions just go into the information right below. You'll see the link there for the mini course. Okay. And when you send out this questionnaire, what happens is, is you are going to get some really great feedback that you can work with. You're going to discover words that people use to describe you a super talent that maybe you didn't even realize and you weren't leveraging enough of. It'll help you craft your real zone of genius, the thing that you are so good at and you're adding your twist to it. So I highly recommend conducting that questionnaire as you're starting to craft that differentiation for your personal brand. All right, strategy number two on how to differentiate your business is you wanna find the white space in your category. Now, assuming that you are in a profitable niche and as you may have heard before, the profitable niches that are safe bets are health, wealth, and relationships. Well, I believe that there's one more space and that's passion projects, you know, such as people who super love golf or they love their pets or they love crafting. That's what I mean by passion projects. So any one of those four are a pretty safe bet that it's a good niche. Okay. So within that, you want to make sure that you're finding the white space and the white space is about identifying where there's a little corner of the market where you can add your flair, your unique message or your zag, as I like to refer it to what others are doing. I'll tell you that there's always something that you can find even in a crowded market, such as, for example, I'm going to show you this product. This Venus LaFleur is a really great example of that. So this was a gift that I got from a dear client of mine. It's the these flowers there. And it's a beautiful bouquet of roses. And what's so fascinating about them is that they last about a year. So this company, Venus LaFleur, they really 
managed and solved for a real problem. Because how many times have you gotten flowers that are just so beautiful, but then they wilt in about a week or a week and a half? Well, Venus LaFleur added their own twist by making it so that these flowers that they sell, these gorgeous roses, stay this way for over a year. It's really amazing. So that's where they found their white space. And in my personal experience, where I found my white space is that initially when I started on my own as an entrepreneur, I was talking about business growth or business coaching, and that's just not quite enough. There's so many business coaches out there. So when I really started to put together, and I I went through the same exercise with that questionnaire, I figured out that one of the things that people were talking about in corporate that wasn't really being talked about in the entrepreneur space was positioning. And I know how fundamentally critical positioning is to stand out. So when I claimed the white space of focusing on positioning, it's when things started changing. And the reason is because not a whole lot of people were talking about positioning in my space. They're more or less talking about tactics and I really wanted to focus on strategy. So that was my way to differentiate. So really what I am showing you is the importance of capturing that mind share, right? So what is it that you want to be known for? What is it that you want to stand out with? Because when you capture that mind share, that will help people remember what you're all about. Make sure that you're claiming your white space because it's about being a Seth Godin, author, marketing expert, Seth Godin talks about, it's about being remarkable. So find that unique white space and then go out and fill it. All right, strategy number three on how to differentiate your business is you want to leverage contrast. Now, if we see two things in a sequence that are different from one another, we'll tend to see the second one as more different from the first one. So that's actually called perceptual contrast. You can use contrast in your pricing to anchor to a fallback pricing. You can use contrast in your personal brand, your customer service by going the extra mile in the actual process of what it is that you do and how you provide it. One of the best stories that I remember is this rolled ice cream place. Now, when my family and I, we went to Thailand a few years back, we saw rolled ice cream, this really cool way where they take cream and they put it on a frozen plate and it and they roll it. So it really makes it different and remarkable. So when I saw that rolled ice cream at a kiosk at my local mall, I was really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, rolled ice cream. Right across from that was McDonald's that also sells ice cream. So the rolled ice cream place wasn't focusing on the thing that was making them different. They were, weren't focused on highlighting the difference. So they actually had the kiosk kind of covered. So people really weren't seeing that rolling process. And that was really robbing them of the full experience. So when I brought up to the owner, I'm like, hey, have you thought about maybe taking down that wall? Because the whole rolling of it is part of the experience of what people are getting. Because I mean, let's face it, ice cream is ice cream. He's like, yeah, but I paid a lot of money for this kiosk. And, and I'm like, I, I did it to me, it didn't make a whole lot of sense because I feel like he wasn't focusing on the thing that was making him different. He was bypassing the differentiation. Well, long story short, go back about a year later and the rolled ice cream place is not there anymore. So again, don't let that happen to you. You want to make sure that you're focused on the thing that makes you different. Because in his case, it was about the rolled ice cream. Because all things being considered, people are going to make up their mind based on price. So if the rolled ice cream guy wasn't focused on really highlighting the differentiation, then most people are just going to go to McDonald's because in Instead of spending $8 on rolled ice cream, they could probably just get at McDonald's for $2.50 right? So make sure you're highlighting your differentiation and really making it clear that contrast. You want to make it really clear. You know, contrast also comes in with your brand image, the sayings, your life philosophies, the position that you're taking. The key to using contrast to your benefit is to identify where everybody else is playing in one way. And then you literally flipping the script, creating contrast so that you stand out, right? At the same time, what's really, really cool is that when you have that contrast in place, people will look at it and be so intrigued and curious about the contrast that they'll say, wow, tell me more. And what it actually does is that it puts potential objections on the curb. Like, So the magic there is that Again, because of that uniqueness and differentiation, it could even slash the objections, right? Because you're steering that prospect from the frame of mind to one of curiosity and intrigue. Well, they will want to know more about your product. That is, of course, taking into account that you have an offer that converts because it is irresistible. So you want to make sure you have that. All right. So those are three strategies for differentiating your business and your personal rent. If you want me to add these types of videos more often, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Which of the three strategies that I cover are ones that you are going to deploy? Remember, don't forget 
to grab that questionnaire. The link will be right below for you. Again, no need to reinvent the wheel. You can just grab it. Also, if there's any other strategies you want me to comment on or, or share with you, put in the comments below hit the subscribe button and definitely hit the like button so that I know that this content is helping you and it's resonating with you. I read all the contents and I appreciate any thumbs up because the algorithm supports that. And so by you commenting, it gives the ability for me to keep doing these videos because I know that people are watching. All right. So see you on the next video and make sure to keep moving forward because your message matters.